it's nice meeting people online. It's a little bit nicer to meet them in person. So if you do have the opportunity, and definitely don't break your budget to make it happen, but if you do have the opportunity to go to a conference where you can meet your peers, you can meet your friends in person, I don't think it's ever a bad thing. Welcome to Start the Doubts. I'm your host, Jared Easley. Joining us as always from Maui, Hawaii, Aloha, our official co-host, Kamanzi Constable. Aloha, Jared. It's it's been a while. Do we still know how to do this? <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna get back on the horse today. As Kamanzi mentioned, we've been away from the podcast now for what seems like ages. It's been several weeks for sure. And there's a reason for that. We've had a lot of things going on. We've put out a number of episodes of compilations. Our friend Jody Mayberry was kind enough to come in and do an episode with Todd Henry, which is amazing, by the way. If anybody hasn't checked that out yet, that's the most recent episode prior to this one. And uh, But yeah, come on, Z. So let's talk a little bit about what's been going on. You and I actually had a chance to meet in person. I know. What did you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for those that have been listening for a long time, and this was one of the most common things that I heard at the event that we met at, which was Podcast Movement. I heard people saying, you know, this is your first time to meet Kamanzi. Like, I thought you guys have hung out many, many times. And uh, it feels like we have. I mean, we've done a podcast. We've written a book. <laughs> and, uh, amongst other things, we've had countless conversations, but we've never met in person until uh, the beginning of August in Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah. Um, well, not only meeting you, it is different because we've written the book together. We've done a lot together. So it was it was different meeting in person the first time, but not only just us meeting, meeting I hadn't met a lot of people. You did podcast movement obviously last year. It's you're you're one of the co-founders, but for me this was my first podcast movement. So to meet, I don't know, I want to say maybe what hundreds, hundreds of people that I've known online for a long time, to meet them in person, like as soon as I got there and as soon as I walked in the lobby, like I'm surrounded by people like Hey, come on, see, and it's like, you know, you know these people, but you don't really know them. So it's pretty fun. <laughs> that is cool. All right. So come on, see, you've been to a lot of events. I mean, you've spoken around the world. And so podcast movement, even though, you, you know, you love podcasting in the sense that you and I do this podcast, you do an audio version of your articles and stuff. But, uh, you know, you're more of the writer and you've, you've said that on a number of occasions. What did you think of podcast movement? I thought it was an incredible conference. I don't know if it's just because it's a group of podcasters. I don't know if it's because of the community that's been built, but the spirit there was was far different than you would typically see at another conference. Even people that you don't know, like random strangers, I'd walk up to a stranger like, hey, I'm Kawazi, how are you? You know, there wasn't that awkwardness that you, that I felt, that I've felt at other conferences. It felt like you knew everybody. I thought it was well run. If there was any hiccups, I don't think I saw them. <laughs> so you did a good job if there was any of covering those up. But I thought it was well run. I thought the hotel was pretty immaculate. I was really enjoying the hotel. A lot to do there. Texas, not that big of a fan of Texas in the summer. Like it was scorching hot. So <laughs> every time we went out to go meet up with some people or have lunch or whatever, Texas was it definitely let you know that it was there. But the event itself was great. The speakers were really good. The ones that I saw were really good. The PMX talks that are kind of like TED style talks. I saw a bunch of those and it was cool to see what some first time speakers getting up there and you could tell they're a little nervous and I can sense it because, you know, I was one of those at one point and so I could see the nervousness in them, but they got it up there and once they got up there, they just kind of rocked it. So I, I learned, I had fun. I thought it was a great conference. You know, from talking to you after the PMX event specifically, I remember you saying there was a few of the talks or the presentations at PMX that really stood out to you. And uh, let, let's just go ahead. Let's give some well-deserved shout outs here. Yeah, I thought the one that kind of surprised me the most was our friend Elroy Wells, who I had known online a little bit before then. But uh, to hear, hear him get up there and he gave like a real like TEDx style talk. I mean, he brought it. He told his story. He was great. Anthony. I can't remember his last name. So I'm sorry, Anthony. I want to say it's Anthony Andrew. That could be wrong. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got technology, so I'll look on Facebook. But Anthony got up there and gave a talk on transparency. 
And he wasn't mm. even one of the scheduled speakers. Uh, Joe Pardo, buddy, our buddy Joe Pardo, good fan of the show. Yep. He asked anybody, do they want to come give a talk? We have some time. So people came up and it was like five or six people and we voted on, they told what their talk would be and we voted on it. And so Anthony was the one that got chosen and he gave a talk on transparency and Love it. it was really good. So he was good. Joe Pardo, great, great MC. He was really good. Michelle, her last name starts with a T. She was really good. Matt Lovell gave a really good talk. I happened to see that one. That one was really good. Brian Orr, friend of the show, interesting <laughs> guy. <laughs> hey, we love Brian. Yeah, Brian gave Brian gave a good talk. And I saw there was a lot more that I saw. Um, there was probably like seven or eight that I saw that were that were really good. But those are the ones that came to mind. That's awesome. And then, of course, you got a chance to, to actually visit and hang out a little bit with people like Pat Flynn. So what was that like? Oh, yeah. We first day I put my stuff down. I saw Jared and Dan walking in the hallway. Our first meeting was by chance. <laughs> so, so, but Jared was busy. So I went to the uh, whiskey and rye, the little restaurant there inside there. And I walk in there with Brian Orr and Joni Mayberry and we're, we're all just going to hang out. And all of a sudden Pat Flynn is just sitting there, just kind of chilling. And I'm like, Pat, what's <laughs> up, man? Like, you know, you feel like you know him. You feel yes. like you know him. And he was, I was happy to say he was just everything that I thought he would be. He was that got a really good vibe from him. It wasn't one of those like, well, get away from me kind of vibes. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was very welcoming. He talked to people. He shook hands. He took pictures, got the selfies. So Pat was, he was cool, very cool in person. And Man, uh, that's great. Jamie Tardy got to meet her for the first time, had a great, excellent talk with her. Jason Van Orden met him. Very, very cool guy. And you see him online. You listen to their podcast. You get to know them, and when you meet them in real life and they don't turn out to be something they're not, it's just really nice. Well, I know your interaction and, and specifically your interview with Pat Flynn earlier this year has had a huge impact in your business and just kind of the tone of this year for you. So I knew getting to meet him, and I, I just I could tell that was going to be a really cool moment for you. Yeah, I was I, I was able to say thank you in person. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. And we we're able to chop it up. He was telling me how every day he gets emails, like ton of emails from people saying that they heard that episode. They did what I was talking about and they landed on large sites. So that was pretty cool to hear. <laughs> it is. It, well, it's because it works, man. So. All right. Well, we don't uh, get sidetracked on some of that, but um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. And that is uh, the opportunity that came up. So our book is with our publisher, which is Sound Wisdom. And they've been tremendous to you. They've been uh, super kind to me and, and kind of stepping in as a newbie to their family. And they approached us about the possibility of having advanced copies of the book at Podcast Movement. So let, let's just kind of tell that story about how that came together and then what that experience was like being able to actually have copies of the book and be able to share that with real people. And, you know, we weren't handing these out for free. These are, you know, books that people were paying for. And um, yeah, so let, let's start with that, you know, how that developed. Yeah. Well, our publisher, Sound Wisdom, the head of the publishing, I don't, you know, I asked him, his name is Dave. I asked Dave, I'm like, what do we call you? Are you like publisher? Are you CEO, president? <laughs> I'm like, what are you? And he's like, I'm Dave. <laughs> so, so we'll just say he's Dave, but Dave, our publisher, he was actually there at podcast movement. It was kind of a last minute thing because he had talked about coming and then there was a scheduling conflict. And at the last minute he said, I'm going to be there. And I think that we can get copies of your book. Now to understand this, you know, this is a traditionally published book. Traditional publishers move a little bit slower. So like from the time that you hand in your book, it is a year before that book ever comes out. And Jared and I sent in the manuscript for this book in what, like December, January, mm -hmm. something like that. So for them to be able to get the book done and to get copies of the book at Podcast Movement was an incredible feat on their part. So we're definitely very grateful for them. But they said, hey, we can send 100 copies of this book and we can get them in the hands of some people at Podcast Movement, some people that are going to be willing to write a review and kind of be evangelists for the book. So Jared and I were like, game. 
it kind of meant that we were going to have to have a booth. I was going to be man of the booth because Jared was kind of running around like a madman at the conference, of course. So I, you know, I'm chilling in this booth and a hundred copies, you know, Jared and I had talked about this. You're like, yeah, a hundred copies. That's a good, that's a good, decent amount of books. And on top of that, I had my book, my first book, Are You Living or Existing, had a hundred copies of that. So we, we set up the table there at Podcast Movement. We put up a sign. They were $10. Uh, you can get the advanced copy for $10, which I think is a steal. Oh, yeah, totally. And, and then when we get to the conference, we found out that our, our publisher, Dave, had sent 200 copies of the book, not 100. <laughs> so, like, no pressure. When I go to the front desk to get the FedEx of this, they keep bringing out these boxes. And I'm like, what's this? You know, so so yeah. it, was a, it was a few books. But in the end, we ended up selling 190 copies of books. So we sold all the copies that we wanted to sell. We kept a few back for Jared and a few back for I for some other things, which we could talk about in another podcast. But we kept a, a few back for us and we sold all the books that we wanted to sell. I sold 80 copies of my book, Are You Living or Existing, which was fun. But it was fun to have people not only get the book, but I don't know if you heard this, Jared, like we sold it. Somebody would buy it day one and then they would come back day two and said, hey, I read like five chapters last night. Like, this is incredible. So I don't know if that was a little uh, butt kissing well, or if they enjoyed it. Well, to put it in context, I mean, this event was I mean, it was not for the weak and weary. I mean, it was starting in the morning and then kind of pretty much go, go, go for some and most late at night because even after the event was over, people were hanging out. They were wanting to go to meetups or they were visiting with friends, having dinner or having drinks or whatever. So, I mean, these days were long days. And, um, you know, for people to then go back to the room when they probably should be sleeping and read five chapters of a book. <laughs> wow. You know, that, that's kind of a little bit insane and uh, also kind of cool at the same time. It was very cool. And the thing that we're getting now and that I'm getting, I know Jared's getting this, but I get a lot of this now. It's people that were at the conference that maybe didn't know, or they said, I'll come back later and they didn't get a copy of the book. And now they're shooting messages like, man, I wish I would have got it there. Like, can you send me a copy? Definitely getting a a bunch of that now. Well, I'm telling people, no, you got to wait till January and it's not out of being cruel. It's just, that's how it is. I mean, the, the advanced reader copies were intended for that event. And the people that got them, you know, they, they've had a chance to dive in. And then the people that didn't, they're just going to have to wait a little bit. But the content of the book, without going on a tangent here, feedback has been absolutely tremendous. And some feedback that I, I'm thankful for, but I didn't quite expect. And I'll specifically mention um, Alex Barker. I mean, he gave you some feedback about one of the chapters. And I heard you share that feedback about uh, this specific chapter we thought was you know, maybe a little bit repetitive. And, and I actually agreed. I was like, yeah, that was, I, I, when I read through it, I thought the same thing. So we're now actually making a change to the book that I think is going to make the book even better. But it took us selling advanced reader copies and for people to read it and give us their feedback for us to really understand and know. I think this is a, an incredible opportunity. I don't know if most authors get this opportunity, especially with a traditional publisher, to be able to get that feedback from the people that this book was intended for. And saying, hey, you know, like make a change like that chapter. And both Jared and I, we completely agreed. We're like, yeah, Alex was right. Let's take it out of there. We just want this book to be, we want it to be no fluff, <laughs> no fluff. Yep. And uh, people have said that definitely the, a lot of this book is no fluff. And so getting rid of that will just kind of get us there. So I'm, I'm really grateful. I'm grateful for everybody that's posting pictures on Instagram, Facebook. Mm-hmm. They're making like quotes pretty quote pictures and all that. And I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I've got to say, you know, we've had a number of people take pictures of the book cover or to your point, they make these little quotables via Instagram or whatever third party app they're using. But I see those, you see those and it just warms your heart. It, it makes you feel good. And it makes you uh, appreciative of, of the people who are not only reading the book, but also the impact that the the message, that core message of the book is having. And that's what it's all about, man. So for me being a first time traditional author of self-published the podcasting book, but uh, come alongside you and be a part of this project. And then to see that response has just been something I personally will never forget. And how do you think you're going to feel once you walk into a bookstore and see it? (laughs) You know, I've tried to envision that and I just can't do it. Like I've seen your picture of you holding the book in in the bookstore there. And I look forward to that moment when I can take a video and, and Rachel, my wife and Lana, my daughter can Going to Barnes and Nobles here locally and pick up that book. I think that's going to be a special moment. 
but yeah, man, it, it's it, it is. It's surreal. It's a cool thing. The event itself, you know. Well, I don't think I don't think the listeners would let us leave unless um, I asked you about your perspective of the conference uh, being one of the organizers. You know, there's a, a number of things that were different from year two to year one. And if you're remotely interested in podcasting, podcast movement is absolutely the place to go. And, and there are people who have not started a podcast yet, but they, they're interested in it or they listen to it and they go and they still get a tremendous amount of benefit out of it. And then that's not even counting what Kamanzi was talking about. The community, the community aspect is so strong. Just so many people are, are looking out for your best interests. They're wanting to work with you or they're wanting to encourage you or they're wanting to hear your idea. And it's pretty exciting to see that kind of synergy. The event itself, we made a tremendous effort to up our game. And I feel like those decisions were very good for the community and for the event. So in that aspect, I have no regrets. Of course, you always learn a few things that you don't know that you don't know until you realize you don't know it. And yeah, I'm grateful. I, I'll be honest, come on and said I, I prayed constantly. I read my Bible a lot. I asked for people to pray for the event. And I feel like God really did bless that event. And um, well, you know, and, I, and I could speak to the things that Jared was uh, saying, like with the little things, like as soon as I checked in to the hotel and the room keys, I say podcast movement on it. It's like, it's just like a little touch like that. Or when we're going to this after party at this bar venue, whatever it is that you want to stockyards, stockyards, there you go. And to have these big buses that are going to come and they're going to take you to shuttle you back and forth. I think little touches like that made all the (laughs) difference. I got to stand at the door of most of those buses and welcome our attendees on those buses. And so that was kind of my one chance to just real briefly say hi to most people. And uh, even though it was really hot outside, because it was, and it's August in Texas. And uh, next year, by the way, is going to be in Chicago. So I don't think it'll be uh, quite like that. But getting a chance to see everyone and, and, and meet people, shake their hands, welcome them. I had a number of folks come up to me and say, hey, I've been to other events. The organizers of those events would have never done what you did. That personally meant a lot to me that you did that. And I thought, well, that's that's cool because it was pretty hot outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got to say, man, I, I enjoyed the event. I brought Rachel and Lana with me. They had a blast. They got to sell books with you for a little bit. So there's tons of cute pictures of my daughter, you know, sitting with Kamanzi, you know, trying to get people to pay for a book. So <laughs> uh, they bought it. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know if that strategy was the best one, but, you know, we do what we can. It was a killer strategy. I'm telling you, people bought it just because she was there. <laughs> You know what I was not used to, Kamanzi, is people coming up to me wanting to sign the book. And that's a completely foreign concept to me. I mean, the last book was an ebook, so you don't really sign an ebook. People are coming up, here, I want you to sign this book. And it's like, oh my goodness, what do you even do? You know, I don't know what to do. And I was just sitting there at this table. Jared was was running around, so people definitely chased him down. But I'm sitting at this table. I think I signed enough books to like I felt like I was signing a mortgage. It just <laughs> so next time we do something like that, we probably just want like a stamp or something. I don't know. Well, I warned you, Kamanzi, and uh, I told you prior to going into podcast movement, you were going to be a celebrity there. And I feel like that prediction ended up being true because I, I, you were never I can't remember hardly any moments when you were just by yourself. You had people around you that entire weekend. Cool people. Fun people. Yeah. I agree. So, and it was nice to to get a little hang time with Jody Mayberry. That was my first time to meet him. I know that was your first time, and and you mentioned a host of other folks. And he so, is yeah. he is exactly like you think he would be. <laughs> I can <laughs> I can hear his voice in my head right now. Well, I I personally enjoyed hanging out with uh with everyone there. Sometimes I kind of wish I'd had a little more time to hang out with folks. But come on, you and I kind of made it a point to grab meals a few times. I know we had lunch and we had dinner, and then. Even one morning when it was super hot, we went and walked around the uh, the water garden there in uh, Fort Worth, which is really amazing. If you're ever in Fort Worth, go to the water gardens. That's definitely where it's free. It's it's pretty cool to walk through. But yeah, just really enjoyed that that hang time with you, and then you know getting to share that with other friends too. That's something I'll never forget. And then the most surprising thing at a podcast movement. Are you ready? Yeah, let's hear it. Papacitos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, we can't have this episode and not talk about Papacito. So, oh. Kamanzi, uh, how about how about you do the honors? So here? the first day I met Jared and I met Rachel and little Lana, they were talking about this restaurant called Papacito's. It's like a Tex-Mex place. And I think we do have Tex-Mex here in Maui, uh, Jared, from what people tell me, but I don't really frequent it. 
But yeah. Jared kept saying, like, this is like the best restaurant ever. The food is the fajitas are like the best. And everybody, we're all, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, okay. And then Jared, I told this to a few other people and they're like, yeah, okay. So after the conference was over, it was a group of us that included our buddy, Anthony Tran, fan of the show, Megan, Pegan, Julia, Pegan, and the Easleys and myself. That, that was everybody, right? Yeah. And we went to Papacitos and they brought out these fajitas, homemade tortillas, which were delicious, homemade right there on the spot. The meats of the chicken and the steak, delicious. And then they, the thing that was kind of killer that I wasn't expecting was this butter. So I don't know. <laughs> I've never had that, Jared. But when you put that butter on there, it like melted in your mouth. Man. It, yeah, it's called Montequilla. It's this Mexican butter. And you take a spoon, it's it's melted. I mean, you just kind of drizzle it over the fajitas. And man, it is something else. So I'm glad you got a chance to try Papacitos. And, and to your point, Megan, Jenna, and Anthony, they all were like, Dude, this is, you know, I, I don't know where I'm ever going to eat fajitas again after this because it was that good. It was that good. And we got to take a, a group picture where I was wearing a, a goofy hat. A sombrero. Yeah. yeah, I think that might be the uh, <laughs> that might be the uh, the image for this episode, actually. <laughs> Every time. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. All right. So, come on, D, is there anything else that maybe a takeaway or two that, that you had from the weekend, not specifically for podcast movement, but just something that really stood out to you? Yeah, and I will say it's from Podcast Movement. This idea of community, of friendships, because I met some great people. I met some people that were not as friendly as I would have thought they would have been. Um, So we'll leave it at that. But when this idea of real friendships and when you have real friends like that, it's invaluable. I mean, it was like there were little mastermind meetings going on all the time. And I even came away from this telling Jared and Jody and Ryan Gray, Mike Kim, John Harrison, that that's our, our mastermind group, that we need to start meeting up again because we, have, we haven't met in a while because that community that I felt there, like I want to feel that again in a mastermind group. And yep. it just sparked something in me where like, I like this. I like just this vibe. I love talking. I love sharing ideas. I walked away from the conference after having all these little little mastermind meetings like, I would go to grab breakfast with a young man named Matthew David Smith, who helped Jared and I at our booth. We would go to have breakfast and like eight other people are like, hey, can we join you? And so it's like this 10 person mastermind, you're kicking around ideas. And I'm like, wow, Like I walked away from the conference with like four or five things I wanted to do. I wanted to implement in my life and business. So that idea of community and the power of community, the power of strong friendships, I think that's like the theme that I I definitely took away from the conference. One of the things I really enjoyed, Kamanzi, is you and I, you know, we've done the show now for a long time. And for us to be able to like see and chat face to face with some of our previous guests from Star of the Doubts was that to me was so cool. Like people like Dixie Gillespie was there. Of course, we got to hang out with Aaron Chase from $5 Dinners. We saw John Schumacher, who's been a guest. The Lee, Cockrell. <laughs> Lee Cockrell was there. Yep. Goodness, there was, there was many, many more, and I'm leaving several out. But I mean, I really found that to be just tremendous. Like I enjoyed being able to see everyone face to face. Patty Elise was there. Oh, I mean, you her. can't leave without talking about <laughs> Patty E. <laughs> <laughs> Patty E, man. If you don't know Patty, definitely worth listening to that episode and uh, she's something else and she stands out big time when you meet her in person <laughs> great great personality great heart alex harris yep. first time meeting him in person jared sees him because they're in that florida podcasters thing but me to be able to meet alex such a cool guy oh yeah totally i mean there was many many others that we got to hang out with and, and visit but people that have actually been guests on the podcast where you and i've spent time with them and and that you know, it's funny how even Steve Stewart, uh, Steve Stewart's another one, but you know, there's <laughs> what's funny to me is how that just a 30 minute podcast interview, but then you're hanging out with them in person and you feel like friends. You feel like you know them. Yeah. The Kinsons, James and Jennifer Kinson. Yes. Yep. James Kinson's another good example. It was just like we had all been just hanging out for years and, and knew each other. And 
you, you can't beat that. I, I'm definitely looking forward to 2016, and I'm definitely looking forward to Chicago. I hope you'll uh, bring your wife Tanya to Chicago. And, and what's interesting is, yeah, I mean, you, you're from Milwaukee originally, so Milwaukee's not that far from Chicago. No, we'll bring the whole family. Definitely uh, have them go shoot, see family in Milwaukee, enjoy podcast movement in Chicago, and I think it's going to be great. It's going to be a blast. But, uh, you know, it did feel like a Star of the Doubts reunion at Podcast <laughs> Movement. <It really> did. <laughs> so uh, I personally enjoyed that. I thought that was fun. So, Jared. Yeah. What can we tell the listeners about what we expect for Star of the Doubts of Earth this year and, and our book? Well, right now, the focus is definitely on the book. I mean, we've got a few things that are going to be coming up. One of those is we're going to be doing a crowdfunding campaign to basically help market the book, promote the book, and get a group of people on board supporting the book. And uh, yeah, obviously, we're going to try to, to raise some money as well and, and buy a bunch of copies of the book and stuff. But uh, we're really excited about testing that. Uh, that's something we've never done, at least from a writer's perspective and a, and a book perspective. So that's going to be coming up here later in the fall. And then, of course, the book is going to come out in January of 2016. And then Star of the Doubt. So we're going to continue to put out some episodes and, and uh, keep trying to provide the best content that we can with the show. And just really appreciate everyone who listens. And I know Kamanzi hears from you and I hear from you and, and just want to say thank you. If you've never reached out to either of us, if you're listening to this right now, I mean, we'd appreciate it. Just open up your email on your phone in the subject line. Just, just I don't know, put fajitas in the <laughs> subject line and just send a blank email. You can send it to Jared Easley, J-A-R-E-D Easley, E-A-S-L-E-Y at gmail.com. And uh, just let us know that you're listening and tell us what you want to hear this fall. We're putting together uh, some different interviews, different conversations, different things that we're going to do for the show, which I know are going to be fun. Uh, but we also want to hear from you and find out what, what it is that you're interested in or if there's someone specific that you'd like to hear from. Kamanzi and I'd love to know what that is. And so Kamanzi and I are going to have a couple more episodes. Kamanzi's written just some amazing articles that have just completely gone viral and have had tons of shares and are making a tremendous impact. So we're going to highlight a few of those on some of the upcoming episodes. Because I think they're just really good topics that need to be addressed. And then we'll have some really good guests, too. I know we've reached out to people like Megan Pangan, who's going to be on the show, and, and several others. So it's going to be a good thing. Yeah. And we got to get Jenna with Megan. You know what? That would be fun. So Jenna can be a co-host. And yeah. <laughs> I think Megan can hang, man. I've seen her just continue to develop. And and i um, really proud of what she's accomplished uh, the last year or two. Oh, and I will say that is that is one talk that I, I had the privilege of seeing. Um, the first half of that, and she she rocked her talk at Podcast Movement on on using a video podcast. It was great. Yeah, and Megan is somebody that was a little, you know, she was self conscious. She's like, oh man, you know, I, I don't do a ton of speaking, but it is something that I want to start doing. And for her to be able to have that opportunity at Podcast Movement, I just thought that was uh, well deserved. And uh, Megan's, you know, a great friend of ours, and and to hear that she rocked it, and to hear people talking about her session, just made me uh, really excited that she was able to get up there and do that. All right, Kamanzi, do you have any final thoughts for this particular episode? It's nice meeting people online. It's a little bit nicer to meet them in person. So if you do have the opportunity, and definitely don't break your budget to make it happen, but if you do have the opportunity to go to a conference where you can meet your peers, you can meet your friends in person, I don't think it's ever a bad thing. Well, I appreciate you saying that. So Kamanzi, we'll uh, have some more episodes coming up soon. But in the meantime, mahalo, brother. Thank you. Mahalo. I walked away from the conference with like four or five things I wanted to do, I wanted to implement in my life and business. So that idea of community and the power of community, the power of strong friendships, I think that's like the theme that I, I definitely took away from the conference.